imagine this scenario. You have spent months saving money so that you can get the best top of the line brand name gear, only to find out you should have bought something else. It's okay, it's okay. It's just a bad dream. Because today we're talking about all the gear that you should avoid and what you should get instead. So let's check it out. Okay, I really, really wanted to like this tent. This is the MSR Freelight, the little sister to the popular Hubba Hubba. This tent is right at two pounds and still has a 50 inch wide floor. In fact, it reminds me of one of my favorite tents, the Nemo Hornet Elite, except it offers more room. Everything about this tent is better except one thing. Anytime the fly is wet, water pours in as soon as you open the door. And I understand what they were trying to do. They cut the door diagonally down the fly so that you don't have to fold yourself in half just to open the door. But unfortunately, that opens a fly in just the right way that water pours straight onto the floor anytime you open it. For me, water pouring in is a deal breaker. If it wasn't for this one unfortunate problem, this would be an amazing tent. One of the most attractive packs that I've ever seen is the Big Agnes Prospector. There's just something about the gray and white and red accents that really appeals to me. And honestly, this isn't a bad pack. It just isn't a great pack either. It's not heavy. It's a decent size. It's got some really nice features like the full access zipper. The only problem is the padding. Whatever type of foam Big Agnes used in this pack, shoulders and hip belt is just too stiff, making this entire pack uncomfortable. If you keep your load light, it's not that bad, but anything over 25 pounds is not going to be comfortable. And let's be honest, if your base weight is that light, you're probably not carrying a three pound pack. Probably one of the biggest ripoffs in the entire industry is the Climate Insulated Static V. And look, I'm not an anti-static V person. Just last week I said that it's a great summer only pad, and that's where I take big issue with this pad. The insulated version should be able to take you down to freezing temperatures or lower. They even boast an R value of 4.4. The only problem is, Climate just made that number up. If you look on their website, the certified ASTM R value isn't even and half that at 1.9. That's only 0.6 more R value than the non-insulated pad, yet it's $60 more for the insulated pad and still not warm enough to make this anything other than a summer pad. So don't waste your money. I remember thinking that Jetboil made some of the best stoves on the market. That was until I used one. Based on the price, I always expected the highest quality, but all the ones that I've used have just seemed cheap. Now, they aren't junk, they work well, and they're even efficient. They just don't seem like they should cost $1 to $200 or more, depending on the model. I'd much rather use the MSR wind burner, but more about that in a minute. So you know I love my Helinox Chair Zero. There just really isn't anything that can beat it. Unfortunately, this summer I sat a little too close to the fire and burnt several holes in mine, so I decided to pick up an REI Flexlight Air because what's the difference? Well, a lot actually. First of all, Helinox owns a patent on chairs that have the poles going side to side, so to keep from violating that patent, REI ran their pole from front to back, which means instead of this V shape being on the side where it won't bother you, you have to sit in it. A friend of mine described it like sitting in a taco, which isn't as cool as it sounds. I was also surprised at how much cheaper the Flexlight chair seems, which I guess is what you should expect from a chair that often goes on sale for $60 to $70. Now, all the stuff I'm talking about today, all the stuff I'm telling you not to buy, is sold by today's sponsor, Moose Jaw. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Isn't that going to upset your sponsor? Well, you would think so, except all the things that I am going to recommend are also sold by today's sponsor. You see, they give me complete freedom to talk about what I want to talk about and say what I want about it. And if they didn't, they probably wouldn't be a sponsor of mine. The reality is they aren't just trying to get you to buy what they sell, they are trying to sell what you want to buy, which is why this is a great partnership. If you are into hiking, backpacking, camping, or really into any outdoor activity, you can get what you need at Moose Jaw. And if you use the code MLOMJ, you can get 10% off most things Moose Jaw sells, 5% off things that are already on sale. Some exclusions do apply. Go check them out through the link in the description. I really think you'll like Moose Jaw. Okay, so instead of the Big Agnes Prospector, I would get the Osprey Exos 55 Pro. As I've mentioned, this pack really surprised me. I wasn't expecting to love it, but it ended up going on most of my trips this year. It weighs just over two pounds and is probably one of the more comfortable, lightweight packs that I've ever used thanks to this trampoline-like mesh that cradles your back and absorbs impacts. 
If you're set on one of these all-in-one stove systems, I would get the MSR wind burner. It's about the same price as the higher end jet boils, but just feels better made. But if I'm being completely honest, it's still not the stove that I would choose to take on most of my trips. Instead, I'd bring the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. The Deluxe has this piezo igniter that I find really convenient, but not necessary. Save a little more money and get the regular Pocket Rocket and pair it with a Tokes Titanium Pot, and then you have a system that works incredibly well at a fraction of the cost. Okay, so I really struggle to pick a favorite sleeping pad. Warm pads tend to be less comfortable, comfortable pads tend to be heavy or they sacrifice weight. So if you want to balance all three, weight, comfort, and warmth, I think the Big Agnes Rapide is probably my go-to pad. The Big Agnes pads are some of the most comfortable pads on the market, and while the Zoom is lighter, it just doesn't compete with the Rapide for warmth. And as I alluded to earlier, the Helinox Chair Zero just can't be beat. It's not only the lightest chair on the market, it is also the most comfortable. I might change my my mind comes spring when the new Nemo Moonlight Elite comes out, but I haven't been able to use it just yet. Then last but certainly not least is the tent. I really struggle to recommend just one tent because of how many options there are. Even trying to stay with a semi-freestanding tent, there just aren't many good options. The Hornet Elite was my go-to tent for years, but can't fit two wide pads. The Mountain Hardware Strato will fit two wide pads, but they tend to have a saggy fly. That said, when it comes to two-person semi-freestanding tents, it's probably the best option available. It's well made if it's two wide pads and it's relatively lightweight. So there you have it, gear I would avoid. And if you you already bought some of this gear don't worry don't fret you're not in danger you just might have to go through some extra steps to be comfortable and safe i hope you enjoyed this video please like subscribe and do all those other things and as always thanks for watching